Hello, everyone. I'm just going to forward my presentation here. So as Brandy mentioned, uh, on, on the phone with you today, uh, we have several members of the National Programs team. Unfortunately, Vivian Tremblay uh, wasn't available to join us today, so we're going to be going over some of the programs that are in her portfolio as well. So those of you who have worked with the National Programs team in the past will know that we are a very collaborative team, so you can always approach any one of us. Uh, with questions that you have, and we will always make sure you get to the right person. So we have you for about 28 minutes, and it's going to go pretty quickly. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to cover, and um, we, which is great. It means we have a lot of national programs on our roster now, but it means that Jan and I are going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, we will stay on the line after 1.30 if you have any <coughs> questions at that time. You're welcome to always type uh, any questions into the chat box as we go so that you can, um, so that we can refer to them at the end of the presentation, um, or we'll just leave the phone lines open and we can have a, a chat at the end of the 1.30 time slot. So before Lisa gets started, I just want to let you know, if you accidentally turn on your webcam um, and you'd like to turn it off, you just hit the camera button beside your name in the participants box. So Christina, if you... <laughs> We can see you, <laughs> so if you want to uh, change that, you just press the camera button beside your name in the participants box. Thanks. Great. All right, so we will proceed. So what is the role of the national programs here at Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada? Well, hopefully you all have enough experience uh, with us so far to know that our work is really about strengthening your work. We see ourselves as capacity builders here to help you do the best jobs that you can do on the ground by providing resources, grants, programs, um, and just general support with the implementation uh, of our national programs and certainly anywhere else that we can be of service to you as well. And partly that comes as well from sharing best practices and expertise, so providing a platform for clubs running similar programming to connect and learn from each other. We make heavy investments in staff and volunteer leadership, um, so we love doing trainings and meeting people in person um, or via webinars like this to strengthen the work that you're doing. And when possible, um, of course, we always like to bring new and exciting programs, opportunities, and models of service delivery to you um, in a way that will, will help um, add value to the programming that you're already doing. So hopefully by now you've all seen um, our fabulous model for success, which lives in a, a few different um, formats. We have a poster and a flip book. These are great little pieces that you can use around your club to communicate um, the value of your programs and boys and girls clubs generally to your community. And, but this model for success really frames all of the, the work that we do um, in the office generally and certainly within this program department um, in that all of the programs that we look to develop and deliver um, are looking to have those common features of supporting respectful, inclusive, and engaging environments, relationship building and mentoring opportunities, and community and family engagement. Uh, and then as we move through this presentation, you'll see that we have grouped um, the national programs that we offer by those four core programming areas uh, as we move through, all with the, the goal of hitting those short-term, mid-term, and adult outcomes for our children and youth who go through our programs. So core program area number one that we'll talk about, uh, all the different programs we have in that bucket is physical activity, health, and safety. And I will turn it over to Jan. Hi, everybody. Um, I recognize lots of names, but lots of new names, which is exciting. Um, bear with me as I go through lots of new programs in my project areas. I've been off for a year, so I'm catching up with the rest of you. So Project Backpack um, is a brand new program sponsored by Kraft Heinz, which is super exciting. Um, basically, the idea is that clubs would receive a grant, which um, there's 10 clubs currently receiving, and uh, the backpacks just went out, to purchase and uh, fill the backpacks for the weekends, um, when we know that uh, lots of club members and families are susceptible to hunger um, or poor nutrition. Uh, so uh, Kraft Heinz is helping us help clubs uh, look at ways of sort of bridging that gap. So that's just starting now. There's a few resources available uh, if you're interested in starting your own backpack program without the grant. Um, which I'm happy to share with you, uh, if that is something that interests you. 
Coolmoose. This is a long time running one. It's had a couple of different funders, but Mondelez uh, currently sponsors our Coolmoose program. There's 12 clubs that are running Coolmoose right now um, with a grant. There's probably lots of other clubs that are um, engaged in running Coolmoose without the grant. There's tons of resources for Coolmoose. If you haven't checked them out, please do so on our website. Um, you can download uh, the web tutorial or the activity guide. Um, there's little activity boxes, which we still have some, and I think uh, most clubs have received a, a batch of those. So you can download, except for the box, you can download all of those resources from our website, um, and you can use them to run your own Cool Moves program with or without the grant. And we're hoping that this, uh, this program will continue with grants from Mondelay in 2016, so keep your eye out for that. Uh, basic Needs Brighter Future. Um, I'm hoping you're all familiar with this because I know that while I was off, um, all 94 clubs received grants um, from President's Choice Children's Charity, which is super exciting. Um, a lot of clubs also received uh, gift cards to be used to purchase um, food products for your club, which is kind of an extra bonus last year, which was pretty exciting. Um, the grants are available to all clubs. President's Choice Children's Charity wants to support every club in um, providing nutritious snacks and or food and meals to their club members. Uh, this one's a pretty simple application that comes out every January. It'll be back this coming January. Um, so keep an eye out for that and get your application in. The grants are valued at up to $10,000 um, for each club. And um, there's some extra bonuses attached with that, uh, like access to the wholesale club and hopefully gift cards again. And we're looking at ways, I know some of the clubs uh, aren't in proximity to a, um, a President's Choice location. So we're looking at ways that we can, can work with that so you get the same value. Uh, nutrition Best Practices, this is one of the resources Marisa mentioned, so it's not specifically attached to any of our grants um, or programs, but it's um, a fulsome uh, resource guide um, on Nutrition Best Practices that was created uh, by Clubs for Clubs, so you can definitely download that from our website as well. Fair Advantage, uh, this um, grant opportunity just closed last week, and I'm just going through the grant applications now, so if you applied, I haven't forgotten you, I'm just going through them. Um, it's designed to help young adults, so teens primarily, um, make more uh, active and nutritious choices and learn kind of how to be healthy adults uh, as opposed to just relying on the club. And the system for the grants currently is there's a initial grant, which is usually around $4,000, and then also a sustainability grant that's available to clubs um, that have run the program already so they can continue running their Fair Advantage program. Flex your head. Um, you may have seen, I'm hoping you've seen, because um, if you haven't feel you're going to get flooded with more information about it, um, we're really excited to launch our new online training for Flex your head. So some of you um, or your clubs may have participated in our in-person training um, or my other focus groups and such around this program while we were developing it. So we now have it online and it's free training available to all club staff. So please sign up, um, have other staff at your club sign up to do the training. Um, it can be done at your own pace. There's seven modules. Um, you can come and go. So you don't have to sit um, all in one, one shot. Um, I know I was speaking with the club in Stettler, and um, they loved it. Um, it only took them grand total um, a little less than four hours to go through everything. Um, and they didn't do it all in one shot, so you can do little pieces here and there. Um, but definitely check it out. It will um, allow you to then run the Fletcher Head program um, in your club. Uh, you're considered certified, I guess, or trained once you've gone through the, the web training. If you have any questions about it, please let me know um, because it is free to all clubs and there's um, ways for you to access the materials for free as well. You just need to let me know. Get busy. I promise Marisa will talk later. It feels like all of mine are front loaded. Um, so our Get Busy program is um, currently running with grants from Sun Life and um, Public Health Agency of Canada. There will be a new round of grants going out um, early in the new year, so keep your eye out for that if it's something you'd like to run. Um, Get Busy is sort of a leadership um, and healthy living program, so we use um, young adults at your club to engage and run cool moves for younger members um, so that they're learning some um, nutrition and um, healthy active living tips themselves and then teaching that to the younger, younger group at your club. Um, there's tons of support and resources around um, Get Busy as well, which you can all access on our website, including the training guide, which is youth focused. So instead of us talking to the staff, um, we approach it as talking to the youth leaders themselves and a training webinar, which you can have a peek at um, on, our, on our website as well. 
get in the game. This is um, maybe confusing to some people when they see Jumpstart, because um, I know most of, club, most of the clubs access Jumpstart funding for your members, which is amazing. This is a separate program that we run in conjunction with Jumpstart, um, so clubs can apply uh, to run a Get in the Game program, which is a little bit more specific, rather than um, just using Jumpstart funding to have your members access basketball or hockey or what have you. Um, it's just starting up now for this year. Um, there's the potential for a new stream, which will be girls only get in the game. Um, that we're just in the, it's just in the works now, so keep your eye out for that. Um, it should be coming up in the next, um, next year. And uh, right now there's a little over 35 clubs that are running get in the game program, so it's a pretty wide reach um, with funding and equipment provided by Jumpstart. Triple play, this one's brand new to me, so I've been doing some reading on it. Um, it's a Boys and Girls Club of America program that is comprised of three components, mind, body, and soul. And the idea is to um, have children and youth get um, more active and more, I guess, more healthy, that's not the word, healthier, Health. <laughs> um, through those three areas. You can learn a whole lot about the program at the web link there. Um, and currently it's running in 21 clubs in Canada through a generous sponsorship of Coca-Cola. Um, and we're just starting, it's just starting up, so we're pretty excited to see how that went um, in our clubs and see if we can continue it in 2016. This is one that we haven't really talked a whole lot about in our national programs um, 101 before, um, but we have a partnership with Jay's Care. Go Jay's, please let it be a better game tonight <laughs> than it was last night. For any of you that are following, it was painful. Um, we have a great partnership with the Jay's Care Foundation um, who helps us run uh, Rookie League, which is intensive baseball programming um, for kids who have never played baseball. Uh, in addition to a grant that the Jay's Care Foundation provides, they also provide some seriously high-end amazing equipment um, to the clubs for the clubs to keep that are running it. There's not a specific application process for this one. Um, in the beginning of the partnership, we simply followed where their Rookie League camps were going across the country and then clubs in, that were close to those locations we're given the opportunity to run the program. We're now sort of beyond that with 30 clubs running Rookie League right now. Um, we're looking to expand that into another five clubs in 2016. So if you have any interest um, in the program or like more info um, or think that baseball programming is something that your club could benefit from, um, give me a shout, a quick email, um, and we can chat about it. Uh, we're also looking at expanding it into Rookie League 2.0, which is gonna be a super intensive baseball program um, sponsored by one of the current Jays. Uh, that's going to launch in Montreal in the new year, and then we're hoping that we'll roll out across the country later in 2016. All right, Dan gets a bit of a break <laughs> for a short time. Um, so the last uh, slide to talk about in this bucket has to do with a few resources that we have available to clubs and club staff around bullying awareness and prevention. Um, so these are sort of hard copy resources that we have available to you, produced some time ago, but still have valuable uh, information. So we have a pamphlet called Bullying, What You Should Know, What You Can Do, um, that talks about uh, yeah, how to how to make a difference in bullying in your community through your work with with kids um, and youth, and that uh, can impact in your community as well by utilizing these pamphlets, putting them in your club, handing them out to your local libraries, community centers, and schools. Um, talks about really the the issue of bullying, both from the bully, the bystander, and um, Sorry, the bully, the bullied, and the bystanders, and how everybody can have a role in uh, in helping reduce uh, bullying. And it's just a great piece to use, sort of, for PR for your club to show your community that um, that your boys and girls club is, you know, doing what it can around the issue of bullying awareness and prevention. We also have a PDF available um, that's sort of a top ten tips sheet about what leaders can do to address bullying when you see it and how to spot bullying in your club. So moving on to our next core program area of leadership, growth, and empowerment, we'll chat about the programs and resources we have in this area. So the first one up is our Torch Club. So Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada has sort of two flagship leadership programs um, that have been in operation since the 70s, I believe. Um, so very long standing, very well regarded. So uh, trust us that the, the resources have been updated <laughs> since, since they were first developed. 
so the first piece of this puzzle is the Torch Club, which is a national junior leadership program for kids aged 10 to 13. Um, and it's a, a really comprehensive manual on how to develop and run a leadership development program aimed at this age group, though certainly uh, we know that clubs will run it slightly younger and slightly older as well. And the manual runs you through everything from what the role of your staff uh, person should be in the program, um, activities that, that you can run in, in all the different core areas outlined for leadership development in the manual. So in addition to the manual itself, we have posters and pamphlets that you can use to promote the program in your club or in your community. Um, and we have in the past done staff and volunteer training as well. So if you're interested in running this program and need support, we're happy to provide that to you. Uh, this was recently a funded program. Um, we are in the midst of finding a new, a new supporter to do the grants, but the program and resources are available mm -hmm. to clubs even uh, regardless of grants. So feel free to reach out to us in the meantime. So moving on from TORCH is Keystone. So they are uh, sort of designed to work together, though the, though the two programs can be standalones as well. Um, but Keystone is really the, the next step up from the TORCH program and is a teen leadership program aimed at 14 to 18 year olds um, and is again available in English and French. Um, and builds on all the same core principles of leadership development as the TORCH manual does, uh, but obviously in an older, more age appropriate manner. We also added in the last few years a new module on youth democracy and civic action. Um, and that's also available to you if you're interested in taking your leadership programs to the next level uh, in terms of uh, advocacy work, self-efficacy uh, in the areas of um, yeah, involvement in, in civic engagement, which we know is very valuable for our youth and for our communities and clubs to be involved in. So that's available to you as well. Uh, we have clubs running the program with the assistance of grants currently. We certainly hope that we'll be able to offer that again in the spring. Um, but again, this is a resource that's available to, to everyone regardless of whether or not you're receiving a grant to do so. And we know that lots of clubs are. Uh, Take It Easy is another program resource that we have available. Uh, it has been a, a funded program in the past. It's currently without grant money attached to it, but it's a fabulous resource that's available to, to you and your clubs. Um, it's a self-esteem and empowerment program aimed at preteens and teens. Um, the manual itself is broken down into two different age groups so that there are age-appropriate activities for both um, uh, the slightly younger age group and the slightly older age group and really frames out small group activities um, and discussions around self-esteem enhancement. So everything from bullying and peer pressure to body image and sex and sex sexuality. Um, it is available online as a searchable PDF on the website. And we also have an introductory webinar available if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the program. Um, that webinar is available as well. This is a really great tool if you're working um, you know, with a leadership development group, uh, if you have a gender specific girls group or boys group, um, this is a great resource to go to for additional activities um, that really will give you inroads to having some of these difficult discussions um, around some of these sensitive topics with your children and youth. Uh, we also just finished uh, the first three years of a, a newcomer and refugee advancement program which we're hoping will continue in 2016. So we like to let everybody know um, that it's, it's out there and has been very successful in helping several clubs who serve high populations of newcomer Im uh, immigrant and refugee youth um, to sort of look at how they're doing that work and seek to improve it both through community outreach, fostering relationships with newcomer communities, um, and designing programming to really speak to and reach out to some of these um, newcomer youth in their communities to increase their participation in the clubs. Uh, and uh, ultimately with the goal of, of giving them a real sense of belonging in their club, in their community, and then ultimately to Canada as a whole. So we hope that we will uh, be in a position to provide a new round of funding for this program. So if, if you have a high uh, newcomer refugee uh, youth population in your community, keep this one in mind because we may be looking to expand it in the future. I'll speak briefly to the four R's Youth Leading Reconciliation Program. 
which is a relatively new one for us, but something that we're very excited about as it speaks to our ongoing work here at Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada to do better outreach and engage more Aboriginal youth. So the Youth Leading Reconciliation Program aims to support programming uh, to help improve or develop services for Aboriginal youth in our clubs. So we currently have four clubs who are receiving grants in, um, for 2015, and we hope to have a new opportunity to apply for the grant coming up in early 2016, so it's a great piece to look out for. So as a part of this program, uh, youth from clubs across the country are having the chance to participate in capacity building opportunities that prepare them to facilitate reconciliation programming at their club. So it's really a, a program that's designed to bring Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal youth together to work together on projects that will lead to, to greater reconciliation. So it's a quite a meaningful and interesting project. I'll let Jan talk again. <laughs> So our National Youth Council um, is made up, uh, as most of you already know, uh, with representatives from across the country. Um, they advise on national policies related to youth and are um, generally youth spokespeople. They plan and deliver our um, National Youth Forums. Um, the next one will be in 2017. Um, and it's currently made up of 14 members, so their term wraps up at the end of this year. And so you can look for the call for applications, which will be out in scoop tomorrow. So if you have youth that are engaged at your club that you think would be um, good representatives for the National Youth Council, please make sure that you pass along that application form and um, nominate them and get those back into Vivian um, by the deadline. And our National Youth Forum, for those of you that um, were unable to attend like I was, uh, was in Winnipeg uh, in the spring. Um, highly successful, there's a great picture there, it kind of captures everybody. There was 21 clubs that attended, which was amazing, and it was hosted uh, between the National Youth Council and Boys and Girls Clubs of Winnipeg. And we're currently um, looking for the, the new location, or to secure the new location, which will be um, in the spring of 2017. So start budgeting to attend now. <laughs> it really is a great opportunity. So we'll move into our next core program area of learning and career development. So first up on the roster is the Power Up program, which many uh, clubs will know as providing support to homework clubs and beyond. So we know that lots of clubs run Power Up um, as their primary homework support program or some model thereof. Uh, this program has been a uh, granted and funded program for, I believe, 12 years now, so it's got some long, long good, strong legs on it. Um, and it's not a curriculum-based program. It's a highly flexible program just aimed at um, encouraging children to set learning goals and work to achieving them. Um, so we have pledge forms that the, the children who are participating will ideally fill out with some of their learning goals um, and certificates of achievement for the end of the program when they've hopefully um, achieved those goals. So there are grants attached to this program, though, the, again, the program resources are available to clubs regardless of if you're receiving a grant in a given year. Um, and we have lots of support materials available for this program as well. So we have a leader's guide which walks you through everything from learning styles and classroom management, um, how to set up activities, how to uh, reinforce it, uh, sorry, intrinsic motivation and not just uh, prizes and rewards for getting youth uh, interested and engaged in learning. Uh, we also have a 50 tips sheet, which you can sort of see on the right-hand side there, which again is a great sort of community and PR piece, talks about what parents can do to support um, the, the academic achievement of their youth in more than just you know, marks and grades, um, so really how to, to set the platform for encouraged learning. So we expect that uh, a new round of applications will come out in the spring of 2016. We also have very long-running uh, our Sears After School Grants Program, which provides funding for specific after-school programs. Um, so it may be a cooking program, it may be a sports and nutrition program, it may be a leadership program, um, running in the after-school period of 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, so this has been a program grant that's been available to us through our very long-standing relationship with Sears. It's a greatly flexible grant program, so uh, clubs really like it because you can basically apply to do what, <laughs> whatever you have dreamed of doing with some of this support. And we, again, expect a new round of applications for this to be available in the spring of 2016. 
Also funded by SEER, the Support Excellence in After School Programming, uh, programming is the Excellence in Action Best Practices Manual. Again, a bit of an older resource, but still full of very um, valuable information on you know, the, the nuts and bolts of setting up a, a well-running, um, best practice-oriented after-school program. So everything from hiring and volunteer recruitment to safety and um, safety protocols and program planning, uh, evaluation suggestions and such. So it's a great resource um, that you can access if, that's, if you're a new ED or in an interim ED position or have somebody new in upper um, management who you think could uh, could stand to read a bit more about um, how to set up an after-school program really within the Boys and Girls Club context. Uh, talk now about the Career Launch Program, which uh, is currently funded by The Gap, and it was actually a, a program that was developed in partnership, again, between Boys and Girls Clubs of America and The Gap, and we've had the opportunity to access the program for several years now. Uh, so it's aimed at uh, teens 13 to 18 to really prepare them for careers. So it's um, an early steps pre-employment program that talks from about everything from sort of finding what your ideal career path might be to interviewing and resume skills. Um, they'll talk about job shadowing opportunities and mock interviews. It's really, a, a, again, a basic step-by-step -step activity manual on how to prepare teens for the world of work. And then also through this collaboration and partnership with The Gap, um, clubs across the country who are in Old Navy markets have the ability to um, access Camp Old Navy, which is a great job shadowing career day. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in, it's a great opportunity for your youth and you can reach out to us and we'll put you in contact with the right people. So we have a round of applications for career launch open currently. I believe it closes on October 31st. Um, so now is the time to apply for your career launch grant for the coming year. Um, and if you have any questions about it, get in touch. Next on the docket is some exciting new programming that we have in the areas of STEAM. So many of you may know about um, about uh, the STEM movement, and we've added the A, as some other organizations have done. So uh, for our purposes, Steam Ahead um, incorporates any learning and programming in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And we currently have two programs running sort of specifically dealing with the STEAM um, bucket of programs. So one is sponsored by Fidelity, and it's our STEAM Ahead engineering and video game design program. So we just completed a pilot that ran in four clubs over the 2014-2015 school year. And it's a program that offers both engineering build kits as well as video game design tutorials to children, uh, mainly aimed at 8 to 12 year olds, but again with flexibility on either side. So we're currently looking at the results of that pilot, making some changes to our program and resources, and hope to have a new round of grants coming out probably in December or early January. Uh, and we hope to make the engineering build kits, which you can see the young girl holding uh, her successful project uh, in the picture here, uh, to be able to make those available to all clubs, again, regardless of whether or not you're receiving a grant. Staying in the STEM or STEAM fields, we also have a fabulous program offered through Microsoft, which is Game Tech. Um, so clubs can receive grants uh, to run a, a program called CODU, which is basically an introduction to coding uh, for children ages 6 to 12, though again clubs are running it with um, much older uh, groups as well. And CODU can really be a starting point to many other coding platforms that Microsoft has available. Um, we also, through this program, are able to link many clubs to some fabulous hour of code activities to in-person training that might be provided by Microsoft employees um, in your area. There can be in-store opportunities. If your club is located close to a Microsoft retail store, they do tons of programming in stores that clubs are able to access for free. Uh, and we will have a new round of grants for the Game Tech program coming out in November of 2015. Oh, it's 
<laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we also have a Microsoft Software Donation Program uh, where you can access free Microsoft um, software um, and you can contact Brandy for more information on that. We're going to try to wrap up in about four minutes if you just stick with us. Um, if you need to sign off, we understand. Uh, this, again, the webinar is being recorded and will be linked to um, in the future. It's available both on the website and on our YouTube channels. So the Rogers Raising the Grade program most clubs are familiar with now, um, working with youth who are at risk of dropping out of school to help them graduate and move on to post-secondary education. Um, if you have questions about this program, I encourage you to be in touch with us, primarily with Marion or Nicole. Um, we'll have their addresses up at the end of the slideshow. Through uh, many of our partnerships, we have the ability to hand out some fabulous scholarships. So the first one we'll speak about just briefly is the post-secondary scholarships. Um, so the applications for post-secondary scholarships for our post-secondary scholarship program typically come out in February and are available to any students who are entering or continuing their post-secondary education as long as they've been a member of a club for a minimum of one year um, and are under 24 years of age at the time of application good for part-time or full-time studies as long as it's at an accredited post-secondary uh, post institution. So keep an eye out for those. The other scholarship program, which um, has a new name, but the program itself is the same. Um, so formerly the Future Generation Grade 10 Scholarship Program, now the Best Buy Scholarship Program, uh, is available to students who are in grade 10 at the time of application. Uh, applications come out in June, so they need to be in grade 10 now. Um, not going into grade 10. It's a $5,000 scholarship that comes in um, different pieces, $750 gift card to help them purchase a laptop, then a $250 cash payment to help with application fees, and then the $4,000 um, held in trust and paid directly to their accredited post-secondary school of choice upon graduation. So moving finally through the core area of uh, families and communities, really only one thing to talk about here currently, which is our Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada Foundation grant, which are currently out and available now, and the applications will close on Friday. Um, so these are really grants that are available for high flexibility for either infrastructure or programming expenses, um, but do require a 50% matching contribution um, from other sources. If you have questions about these grants, you can contact uh, Jan. Again, the applications are due Friday, so if you have questions, um, get in touch sooner rather than later so that she has time to help you. <laughs> Uh, so that's the end of our programs. If you want to stay with us for a moment um, to just quickly go over a few tips, you're welcome to. Um, again, you can come back to it later. Just a few things to highlight generally about how we run our, our programs and grants, sorry, how we ran our grant programs. Um, we really do review all of our applications quite thoroughly, often with a committee of managers of national programs and um, in many times representatives from the funder as well. Uh, we make decisions based on the quality of the application, but also do take into consideration geography and how many uh, grants your clubs has received in the past. Um, everything is online now, so things need to be submitted on time. We're happy to help, um, but again, you need to get in touch with us sooner rather than later so that we have the, the time to help you through some of your issues. Um, and just so you know now with our new granting process, wherever possible, you can apply for funding for multiple sites up to a maximum of, uh, you know, per grant per site. Uh, so that information is included at the beginning of every grant application, so you can have a peek at it and, uh, and see if it applies to you. And that's a bit about it. Thanks for sticking with us a little bit longer. Uh, here are our contact information. I'll um, flip back to this in just a moment, but I'll just let Brandy do uh, a little. Yeah, I just want to let you know about the next webinar we're going to be having is Engaging Families Through Parent Education Workshops. And we're actually going to have Dina Rafri. She's a member of uh, the National Office. She's going to be facilitating that webinar. So please mark your calendars. It's going to be on Wednesday, November 18th at 1 p.m. And information will be in scoop. So I'll just throw this slide back up so you know how to reach us. Um, again, we'll stay on the line for a few minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute, unmute yourself um, or type something into the chat box and we're happy to answer any of your questions. And otherwise, thanks for joining us and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future.